Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. Uh, we're going to be talking about when to be thankful, and I'd like for you to look with me at Psalm 116. Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The gracious Lord, who is righteous, our God, full of compassion, the Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore, and I said, I am greatly afflicted. And in my dismay, I said, all men are liars. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. We are fast approaching November, which is the month that we celebrate Thanksgiving. And Psalm chapter 116, which we just read together, we hear about the foundation of thankfulness, being thankful, uh, which is God's grace that allows us to experience life in a measure and a way that causes us to be thankful. We, we have to have something to be grateful for to be thankful. And God, in so much of our life, provides and sustains the day of our life, each and every day and every moment of every day. Uh, if we comprehend and focus on the truth of Scripture, everything we have is from God. The very breath we breathe, the very life we live, the ability to think and to choose, uh, the list is endless of what God provides for us and gives to us that we can function and not only have life, but as Jesus said, he came that we would experience an abundant life. Uh, for those who make the effort to have good habits, there are four habits to stay away from. And these are the things that would kill a heart of gratitude or thankfulness. And that is a habit of comparing things, comparing people, comparing lives, and anything. If we're looking at what we have and we continue to compare it to what we don't have or to what others have, we are not going to be thankful. We are going to be uh, tempted to be jealous or envious and uh, then we'll be disgruntled and dissatisfied. Uh, the other thing is to have self-pity. These are uh, the first two of four that if you do these things, it's going to kill thankfulness. 
self-pity, complaining, entitlement, and busyness. So uh, when we are tied up in those type of emotions and thoughts, we're going to be not thankful at all. We'll find ourselves uh, disappointed with life, frustrated, even to the point of maybe bitterness. And uh, we sure don't want to do that, do we? What we can see and take away from Psalm 116, first, is that the psalmist is looking for help in several different places. And in one focus, he says, I've looked to men and I have found that everything they have said and promised doesn't come true. They're all liars. And I, I don't believe that that is a true statement uh, in every aspect of life. I believe there are good people that have good intentions. Sometimes they aren't able to carry through, but, and that there are also people that uh, go above and beyond what they said they try to do. And they are very gracious and consistent in having a heart toward others. And we ought to be very thankful that there are people like that. But we know that God is our intended source of everything that we need. And if we are walking with him, he is the only source for everything that we desire uh, and we long for. Uh, so because there's no person or thing that can truly satisfy the desires of the human heart, nor the expectations of the soul of mankind, only God can satisfy our longings. Uh, secondly, the psalmist, uh, as I said, he trusted in men and people, friends, companions, possibly even family. And he realized that he uh, misplaced confidence and trust in those people. For the Bible says it very clearly, the arm of flesh will fail you. Uh, I've even failed myself. Thought uh, The Bible says, be careful not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. And there's been times I thought, well, I can do that. I can take that on. I've got the ability. I, you know, me, me, me. And, and then come to the place where I sometimes feel like, oh, I didn't realize how much it was going to cost, how much time and strength it would take, how much resource. And you have to rethink things. But uh, too often we have overconfidence in the things of this world and human life far more than we should. And we do not have enough focus on God as being our source of life and blessing and things that will satisfy. satisfy. How, how could anyone who's lived very long in this life uh, not question the wisdom uh, or maybe more truthfully spoken the foolishness of trusting in flesh and man even in our own self uh, scripture often we are admonished to trust in the Lord Proverbs 3 trust in the Lord with all thy heart acknowledge him in all thy ways do not lean to your understanding and he will direct your path uh, uh, we become disillusioned and disappointed uh, most often when we're not trusting in God. In time, God always comes through, not with what, just what we've needed, but I've found that he comes through with uh, blessings that we had not anticipated or saw that would be there, and God provided those things for us. Uh, we need to under stand the the depth that it's like a bottomless pit for our human mind and emotion and from our human spirit and nature uh, to be satisfied you, you can't fill it but if we walk with God we find out there were things that God brings to us that we weren't even aware of that more than satisfy more 
than rejoice our heart. Cause us just to be thrilled to live and to walk with God and to see God's favor and blessing is an extraordinary experience. Uh, there are no individuals in this world, nor any group of individuals, that could offer and provide what is needed for our lives to the point that we would need nothing. The world can't do that. But God can, and God will, and he does, if we allow him to and invite him to. How often do you put your faith in a place you shouldn't have? How about a relationship? That you were looking forward to a relationship and thought that that relationship would make all the difference, only to find out uh, it's just like all others. Uh, they have disappointment, things that we didn't know, didn't expect, didn't understand. Uh, they bring to them uh, issues of life that we hope never happen. But as scripture says, the things of this life fall on the just and unjust equally. It's a part of living in a human world, in a human body. Uh, too often, we are unrealistic and uh, we don't really take time as Paul says, count the cost of the decisions we're making, the choices we make, and uh, and see what it's going to really cost. There's a lot of times we enter, in, uh, in, enter into things uh, and we don't even see there is a cost, only to find out it would have been better if we to stayed totally away from it because there were hidden costs. And uh, then we are totally disenchanted, sometimes even bitter and angry, because we feel like we were duped and people were not honest with us. Uh, thirdly, we find one of the lessons that is learned from uh, this Psalm 116, the psalmist realized that when he put his faith in God, it wouldn't mean he'd be spared from trouble, but it would mean that God would be with him in the time of trouble and would see him through to the other side. And on the other side of trouble, when you're walking with God, is rejoicing and blessing and thankfulness. Uh, the psalmist experienced contempt and uh, mocking, uh, belittling, uh, hurt feelings and emotions, and and literally uh, his focus was, uh, I almost died, and it was only God that saved me. Uh, we look at the three Hebrews in the book of Daniel who's thrown into the fiery furnace because of their faith. And uh, uh, there they were, and the, the, God was there with them. The king acknowledged, is not there a fourth man in the fire like and unto the Son of God? And it says not even none, no smoke, no fiber or hair on their body uh, was burned. Uh, they were kept from any harm, and even the the danger or the remembrance of the smell of the smoke in the furnace. Uh, when we talk about faith, it's faith like that, faith of the three Hebrews and Daniel's faith, uh, that will affect not just uh, how our mind's thinking and our heart's feeling, but it positions us for God to prove himself. When we give him the glory and we praise him for the answer, praise him for his promises, praise him that he is going to make a way through this circumstance, that affects not only our witness to others, but it affects our own journey and our walk, affects our attitude. It helps us to be, even in the time of trouble, people who are worshiping, praising God and giving him the glory because we have confidence Paul put it this way, I'm persuaded that he's able and that he will do what he said. And we need to have that kind of faith in the Lord. <coughs> Pardon me. It's in his journey with the Lord that the psalmist's perspective is changed and refashioned. The way he's looking at his life, as if he's at the point of death, the way he's looking at his family and friends and people around him as that they are not trustworthy and that there is no hope. God 
proves himself as David, the psalmist, allows God to adjust his perspective and turn his mind toward God who is right there with him. He says he'll never leave us. When we turn our eyes off of the problem and on to the fact that Scripture declares, and I believe the Bible to be true, you believe the Bible to be true, that God never leaves us, he never forsakes us, he is with us always, even to the very end. If we really believe that, believe the Word of God, we're going to speak that. In the midst of the fire, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the dying, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of feeling abandoned and failed, we will call upon the name of the Lord and uh, rehearse, if you will, restate things that God has done that will prove to us in that time and this time and today again, I believe, because of all the yesterdays, God's been faithful. He will be faithful today. He's a God that does not change. And you see the transformation and the evolution of how the psalmist matures even as he's writing and stating this song and singing it. He learns to face the future with a greater confidence and calm because of his faith in God and trusting God more than he ever has before uh, because he knows that God is a God of love and mercy and grace and he's a God of keeping his word. After reflecting on the promise and on the process that we go through in the times of trouble, we can see God in every situation. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to be able to look back and say, I should have recognized that God was there and not been so fearful. What did the psalmist do in returning to the Lord for all his benefits? If we look at verse 17 through 19, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord. Yes, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house and the temple, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's something that's so important. People often see us and too often hear us lamenting and complaining and stating the struggle of life. Shouldn't they also hear more than those things, the praise and the worship and the admonition of how good God is, how faithful he is, and how thankful we are that he is our father and we are his children. It's so important for us today, and it's one of the psalms that the Jews would sing and recite at the Passover time. It's part of the Psalms of thanks for God's deliverance from the time of the Israelites in slavery in Egypt. And most likely when the Lord celebrated the Passover with his disciples, very likely in Mark 14, 26 would be one of those times they very, very possibly could have sang this song in, of the Psalm 116. Uh, at the Last Supper, Jesus took the Passover meal and infused it with meaning that this is my body and this is my blood. He was going through his darkest hour, <clears throat> beginning that journey uh, in the trials and in the crucifixion and then ascending to the Father. Uh, unimaginable. The mental, emotional, spiritual, physical challenges that Jesus faced for you and I, for all mankind, and yet he kept his focus up on the Lord. Into your hands, Father, I commend my spirit. And that's our focus today. As we give ourselves to the Lord and whatever his plan and purpose is and whatever happens in the process of fulfilling that, we are going to be people who remember our God, remember his faithfulness, and praise him even in the midst of the storm. Uh, God makes a way for those who trust him and depend upon him. Jesus paid for every aspect of our existence, for our breath, for our salvation, for our justification, for our redemption, for our healing, for the empowering of the Holy Spirit, for the wisdom, the discernment, the understanding, 
uh, courage, everything. Jesus purchased it all, paid for it all, provided it all, makes it available to us and gives us encouragement and understanding of where and when and how to receive it from him. Larry uh, Speary Schaefer uh, points out there are 33 aspects to the riches of God's grace. And uh, we need to embrace every one of those aspects of God's grace. Uh, a writer by the name of John Walford uh, says there's 33 aspects to the characteristics of sin. Isn't it interesting that Sperry Schaefer says there's 33 aspects to the riches of God's grace. I've, I've heard it said for every trial, there is grace and mercy and strength. For every storm, there is a moment of peace. For every situation, God has every answer that will ever be desired or needed and the strength to endure till we receive it with rejoicing. We have choices to make every moment of our life. Every moment is a choice, an opportunity. We need to determine that we are going to begin each of those moments and at the beginning of the decisions we make for our future, that we are going to begin with an attitude of gratitude, a, a voice of thanksgiving, a heart of thanksgiving, and an attitude of thanksgiving, that no matter what's going on, we are going to remain the children of God, and that alone would be more than an adequate reason to be thankful. Can you say amen? What, what can we do uh, differently that could bring us to a, a new beginning of being more grateful than we've ever been? I, I think it's maybe take an inventory of how good God has been and that he doesn't change. He's faithful. He's there for you, my friend, today. He'll be this afternoon and this evening, through the night and every tomorrow until we stand in glory with him. He is so wonderful to his people and to his children. What's hindering you today from being a person that is fully thankful and a person who's rejoicing in God's house with God's people? And when you're going through the community during the day, even though your heart may be breaking and your body may be suffering and things may be very difficult for you, remembering who you are, that you are a son and daughter of the Most High God and that he's walking with you right now, won't leave you. He's going to be there to help you go through every moment of your life. And he's going to see you through until you stand in victory. And I encourage you to remember that and to be thankful. It's we, you and I, as individuals who determine which course we're going to follow. Are we going to be discontented and unappreciative? Or are we going to be thankful and grateful for what God has given us? Even if it's less than what we would have hoped and desired, we still have more than enough reason to be thankful that we are the sons and daughters of God and that our future was him, with him is secure and it is eternal and it's going to be the best. The best is just ahead of us. Hold on, my child. Scripture admonishes us. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for the night. And one of these days, the new day, eternal day of the Lord will dawn and there'll never be any more darkness, sorrow, suffering, pain, sickness, or dying. We're going to be with the Lord in joy and happiness and peace forevermore. Be thankful this season. Tell others, encourage them. In the midst of the struggle, praise the Lord. And most especially, get out and go to the house of the Lord on the Sabbath day and become one of the best worshipers and an individual of thankfulness and gratitude that you've ever been. Let other people see how glad you are that you're a child of God. Have a wonderful rest of your day and week. God richly bless you. Amen.